Hi there, and welcome to my channel. My name is Melissa Kelly, and I am a soul singer from Scotland. At the break of the heart, oh, no, no, no. I've been singing for 15 years and I love it. I also love listening to other people sing. So today on Soul Singer Discovers, we're going to be listening to... Well, hello there, my dudes. I hope you're all well and shiny. I hope you're having a fabulous day. So, I want to thank you all, first of all, for all of your comments, for all of your suggestions. Thank you. There's so many suggestions now. I think I know most of the metal bands that I get told about, or at least I know their name. But some of you have been straight up pointing out bands. I have literally no idea. You could be making them up. You could be making them up. And I wouldn't know. Please don't start making up bands and put them in the comments. Um, for those of you who've already asked and requested that songs be reacted to, we're going to do them. Here's my list. I have to get through that list. There's so many bands. I'm really happy about it. I'm really excited because there's going to be lots of cool things that I don't know yet. Also, to those of you who were sort of getting a bit irked by the fact that I was doing things like skipping through guitar solos, what I would say is I have expertise as a vocalist and I don't always listen to full guitar solos or cut out some of the lead for two reasons. Number one, timing. Number two is that I will comment on the vocals because I'm a vocalist. There are literally tens of thousands of guitar analysis channels on YouTube who are doing exactly what you're asking for. So if you feel angry enough and write me comments about how I shouldn't skip the leads, Calm down, dear. Why don't you go and check out my partner's channel? He actually does go and look through lots of different lead guitar and he actually transcribes them as well. There you go. Now you don't have to give me shit because I skipped through it. God's sake. Okay, today, today we are doing Iron Maiden. I know nothing of Iron Maiden as far as their music is concerned. However, when I was seven years old, my family got cable TV for approximately six months. I only watched two channels. Number one was Cartoon Network for Captain Caveman, of course. Number two was MTV. I watched a lot of MTV, like on repeat. And one of the videos that kept coming up was an Iron Maiden song. I don't remember the song. I just remember the music video. And the music video was just like monks in an underground cave. And it was all very mysterious and interesting. And I think I loved it because I loved any kind of like gothic behavior. And my, my mother hated it. I just remember as well one line from the song, cannot play with madness. That's it. I don't remember anything else. I'm excited to watch a full song of a band that I have been aware of for a long, long time. I've just never, never felt the need. So today we're going to be listening to Iron Maiden and Fear of the Dark. Now, Iron Maiden obviously seem a bit sort of mm, about people using their stuff on YouTube. So I'm using a live version. I'm not mad about it. We haven't done a live version of anything yet. So that's pretty cool. So let's let's dip in, shall we? Let's go. People are singing the breath, that's so cute. This, yeah, this is a big crowd. I love crowd singing along to anything, that's like my favorite thing. Oh! Okay, I want to be at this gig, but as someone that suffers from claustrophobia, no thank you. When the light begins to fade, 
sometimes feel a little strange and chilly in the dark. Oh, he's got a really great resonant low end. The stance. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. There's campus knickers. Okay, so so far, so far, two things. All my life, all I want is to recreate the scene in Almost Famous where they all sing Tiny Dancer on the tour bus. I love when audiences sing along to anything. The fact that they're singing along to the riff is really, really cool. And the lyrics, which means they know these songs inside out. This guy's voice is Bruce Dickinson. I think I was calling him Phil Dickinson for a while, but only because you motherfucker kept talking about Pantera and Phil. I would say that he has a really wonderful, like, low end that feels like talking. Vocals sometimes have arguments, because vocalists are the worst, about whether or not singing should be as natural as talking to you, and you should put no more effort into your singing than you do into your talking. As far as that argument is concerned, I fall on the other side of the fence. I think it's nonsense. Complete dog sh I think singing should take as much effort as it takes, and if you need to take more effort than just talking, there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, currently, very low, very resonant. I like it. Let's keep going. He is running. <laughs> they are so smooshed in. No, thank you. Oh, they're having such a good time. Oh, they're really smooshing each other. Nice. Got great for battle. Oh, Jesus. Nice. Okay. So he's doing this thing. I stand by this with my whole heart. Um, and I, this is kind of why I like doing, I like watching live stuff sometimes because you get to see the singer's technique in real time. He's dropping his jaw a lot. Now it's such a simple thing, but people just forget about it. And he's doing it a lot. Bruce Dickinson is dropping his jaw, fear of the dark, and it's very open and it just creates like a richer sound. And it's so simple. I think a lot of the time with singing, some of the things that fix any problem are really simple and people just assume it's really complex and difficult and it's just not. And when it comes to dropping your jaw, it does, it creates resonance, it stops tension in your jaw or in your throat and it's just a, the right thing to do. The only example I can kind of draw from it from my own experience is it's the difference between, let's say if you were doing like Prince Purple Rain, it's the difference between the end part when I get singers come in who'd sing it and they'll do Really closed, and then you have you just drop your jaw. It just it creates all of this beautiful, rich, rounded sound. I love to see that like male vocalists do the same as soul vocalists. That's cute. I like that. What's this? I don't know. Let's keep going. Okay, he is running, like, full running around the stage. He must be fit. <laughs> How many fucking guitarists do they have? They have three guitarists, right? Is it three? I'm not sure, I'm confused. For a second, so still having a jog around the stage.
I like his stance in a lot of things. He is charismatic. Someone is on fire! He's gotta be, like, fit as buggery. Hang on. He's gotta be so fit. Singing and running are not necessarily two things you can do at the same time. Because, of course, with singing, you have to make sure that you're taking in deep breaths, supported breaths, engaging your diaphragm. There's so many things to think about. And this suave mother is running running around the stage. It's really impressive. Also, I love that he's choosing to go between using vibrato on certain notes and not. Um, it just creates different dynamics within the song. I do kind of hate it when singers have one technique they're really good at, so then they just do it over and over and over again. It's like, no, do something different. He's going between kind of being like, Fear of the Dark, which is just very straight, maybe with a little bend. Fear of the Dark! Uh, yeah, I like the combination of the two. Creating just a different dynamic is cool. Whilst running, this is really, it's really unfair of you actually, Bruce Dickinson, to just be like, I'm gonna be good at a thing, but I'm gonna be good at a thing whilst running. Pack it in, no one's impressed. That's not true, everyone's impressed. How old is Bruce Dickinson? Hey Siri, how old is Bruce Dickinson? Never mind. Siri doesn't know what I'm talking about. Why? Siri, Siri's a bigot. She doesn't, she doesn't want to understand Scottish people. A few moments later. 64? 64? I mean, he's obviously not 64 here because this was recorded, like, I don't know, a few years ago? Wow. I mean, voices age with you. That's just something you can't help. Voices are a human instrument, so they will naturally age. But depending on how you treat them as you age depends on how long you keep your voice. Let's keep going. He's just doing jumping jacks now. Are the audience singing the solos as well? Or delete. Such a wide vibrato. I love it so much. It's kind of operatic. Duck. Possibly charismatic. Oh, this Brucey needs to get his steps in. <laughs> I love that there's a guitarist just spinning in a circle. <laughs> this will never not be funny to me. Genuinely, I think this is me at a gig. It's just me spinning in a circle. It is kind of operatic, isn't it? They're having so much fun. Oh. So just to stop it for a second, like, I don't know Bruce Dickinson's background. He's doing a lot of hunching over and different stances and he's running around the stage. It seems like some of his stances are very intentional. One of the things that some singers do in order to engage their core, engage their support, is to hunch over into their support. Tina Turner did it a lot, and he seems to be doing that on occasion. Also, his vibrato is so wide you could drive a bus through it. It's so great. Very Shirley Bassey. And when I do think of like that kind of wide vibrato and that very drop jaw, I do think of opera. I do think of that. I, I want. I want to know. Is he an opera singer? I'm. I'm not even gonna bother asking Siri. Siri's just like smoking in the background, being like, "Did a Scottish person just ask me something?" 
it was either a Scottish person asking me something or a Hoover soaking up a fried egg. Let's keep going. <laughs> Oh, that was beautiful. Ah! Oh, it's so wholesome. And he's back down to that really like, resonant low end. Oh, that was beautiful. I'm not gonna lie, that last shot of all of those people smooshed up against the barrier is nightmare fuel to me. <laughs> I never, ever, ever, ever want to be at the front of a metal concert unless I'm in front of the barrier with the security because I can't, I can't, it's too, it's too claustrophobic, you can't do it kids. So that was surprisingly more wholesome than I thought it would be. I don't know why but in my brain I just always assume it's going to be a very intense atmosphere or a very intense performance but that felt like, it felt like camaraderie. Camaraderie. I feel like from the few metal people that I know, like friends, have talked to me about how metal fans can be, they can be a bit gatekeepery and they can be very protective of their, their music and their bands and all the rest of it. Um, but this felt like a big lovely hug of a gig. That very wide vibrato feels kind of operatic. Um, he's very tasteful in where he chooses to use that wide vibrato, like he's not using it the entire time and he's using like little swoops. All in all, I think Bruce Dickinson has got a great voice, but it's a great song. And also like a wholesome, like big hug gig. The fans were singing along to the riffs, the fans were singing along to the lyrics. What do you guys think? What do you think of this live performance? Is there other Iron Maiden songs that I should have listened to? What do you think of Bruce? I know that there's other singers in Iron Maiden. They've had other singers. So is Bruce one of the better ones? Who do you think was the best? Is there a best? Let me know below. Let me know if there's any other bands you want to listen to. I know we've got a big list to get through, but let's keep adding to it. Why not? Thank you again for all your comments. I hope you have a very fear of the dark kind of day. And I'll see you all next time. Please like and subscribe. And if you really enjoyed this video, you can head over to my Patreon for some exclusive content. Thank you so much for watching.